I had come up to Castle on the Hill, Palmevi, in Nathrium, only for one reason, and that is to show you the fortress city of Nathrium, because there's no better place to see it. This is a city of three fortresses. We have the fortress here on the hill, which is perhaps 800 years old. We have Palmevi, which I'm standing in now, which was built in 1674, at least started in 1674. And we have Bootsi in the harbour, which was about 1250. But you can see this is a medieval fortress town. It is, in my opinion, one of, if not the best town in Greece. It's a place you have to come and visit. It's a place of history, momentous change. It started off, um, obviously, as a Greek place. Then it became Venetian, a Venetian city-state in Italy, conquered this and, and ruled it for several hundred years. Then, in 1715, the Turkish took it and it became part of the Ottoman Empire. And it has a history and a architecture that just is written by those times. You have the Venetian architecture, you have the old buildings which were once mosques, you have the squares, you have the piazzas, and then in the distance you have Argos, 7,000 years of history with Argos Castle, Larissa Castle there. Just a beautiful, beautiful fortress city, surrounded originally by walls, protecting the harbour, with the castles protecting the city itself. So I've come down from Palmedi up there to the fortress city of Napio, where we're going to have a little walk round. So this was the only gate into fortress Napio. You can see with the fortress above, and it would have been very difficult to come in here without permission. And you can see the walls themselves were about six foot thick, and they encircled the town of Nafplio, running from the castles on the hill down to the harbour itself. Nafplio was the first capital of Greece, and Cappadistrius here was the first governor of Greece. He first set foot in Greece in 1828, after the victory by the Greeks over the Ottoman Empire in the 1821-1826 revolution. So this is the site of the first governor's mansion. Uh, Cappadistrius was the first governor of Greece. He was assassinated here in Nafplio in 1832. So Nafplio was originally a Venetian town. Uh, the city-state of Venice, long before Italy existed, conquered this area of the Greek coast and built this city here, which is why it looks so Venetian and Italianesque. And next to Syntagma Square, or Constitution Square, which is very, very famous in Greece. At the end, we have the Archaeological Museum of Napoli. And you can see the Italianesque heritage here, the piazza, effectively. Italian in style, but then here we have an old mosque, no longer a mosque, now an art gallery, but very much demonstrating the fluid history of Napoli. Nafplio is a very touristy town. In the winter it's quiet, um, lots of locals here, ourselves included, um, but in July, August all the prices go up. Um, but they do look after the place, I have to say. I mean, look at the flowers here, it's just beautiful. Everything's pedestrianised in the old town. There is a new town as well. Looking back down the alleyway here to the east, so the sun's behind me, you can see how beautiful it is. Bucumvalia with the traditional Italianesque Venetian architecture. These little alleyways which you can explore. It's a place I would absolutely hump sink. I suggest you come if you have a chance. If you go to Athens, it's about an hour and a half's drive. And dotted around Naplio, here in the square, are old ancient Greek and Roman ruins. You see there's an old sarcophagus here, fenced off. But if you look for these things, you find them in Naphtio. Naphtio was the first capital of Greece in 1828. In this converted mosque, uh, Cappadistris led the newly formed Hellenic state in their first official parliament as an independent state. There are many um, hotels here, some of them interesting in character because they're 70s. Others, pensions, buildings which have been converted into little boutique hotels, and I highly advise staying in pensions. They're fantastic. Beautiful old houses that you have in Africa. Not many left, you can imagine. 1920s, 1930s, the golden period. The garden here 
next to the sea, just beautiful. And look at this boat. I mean, I've just come up here really to look at this boat. Is it for cruises? I presume so. And then look at the view here. Just amazing with the bird sea, with Argos Castle. Here we have in the castle on the hill, Navfir Palace Hotel. And I just want to show you a little secret that exists in Nafplio that I'm not sure many people know about actually. So if you come through no old Nafplio and you follow the road up the hill, you come in the end to this beautiful Italianesque square, Venetian square. And it seems to be the end, there's a bit of a car park here, but there's actually a little secret here built into the cliff. And if we go in these rather, I suppose, grand looking doors, we see inside that there's a tunnel and at the end of this tunnel there are some lifts, I call these James Bond lifts, and they take you up, straight up, to the Navpier Palace Hotel. Can you imagine building something like this nowadays? I mean, no one would do it. So at the top, we come out into the hotel courtyard. But I just want to show you the views here. Just amazing. The swimming pool, the bird sea. Argos in the distance. Doesn't get much better than this if you want a prime hotel. So in Nafco you have many of these little streets and on these streets you find these pensions, these little independent hotels which I would highly recommend. They're very old and traditional. Beautiful rooms. And we'll go down into the old town of Nafco from the hill. We'll see how well my gimbal works now on these steps. New gimbal, hopefully better video for you. Oh, another little place of pilgrimage, which perhaps only Greeks would come to, but well worth visiting as well. We come up here. Not good for an older person like me. So this is Cappadistra Street, and it has a very sad history, really. But it's a very important street for the Greeks, because Cappadistra, who was the first governor of Greece, was assassinated just here outside this church on a Sunday morning in 1832 by two brothers, one who shot him, one who knifed him. One of the brothers was killed almost instantly by the crowd. The other one was executed a few days later. But this represents really the establishment of the Greek state as we know it today. It's a bit hot, you need the shade here. Napio is best in the evening. If, if you come to Napio, you have to come for the day from Athens. It takes about an hour and a half. But evening is best time to walk around. So along the harbour front here, half just behind over there, across the road, we have various restaurants. These come into their own at night. I mean, at this time of day, they're very quiet. Napoli is very quiet during the day. But at night, this is a thriving, humming place. And I'm going to do a video on nightlife in Napoli. I want to try and capture some of the culture of Napoli. And I think the best time to do that is at night. So here on the square dedicated to French individuals who gave their lives in the 1821 revolution, we can see on the hill the Napoli Palace Hotel in the castle. No trip to Nafplio will be complete without coming down to the harbour where people sit and drink and have cocktails and lunch and enjoy not only the view of the boat over there, but also the view of the boat sea. The castle in the harbour, the castle of chains. Nafplio ceased to exist in 600 BC because they sided with the city state of Sparta against the city state of Argos. And that was a little bit stupid really because Argos lies directly between Sparta and Nafplio, and only about 15 kilometers from Nafplio. So the king of Argos at the time took exception to this allegiance and raised it to the ground. And it was only about 600 years after Christ, 1200 years after it was raised to the ground, that Nafplio came into being again because of its fantastic geography for defensive structures. Brilliant view of Palmini with a square remembering the French who died in the revolution of 1821 creating the independent Greece. And then Hotel Grand Britannia, and behind that, Nafplio Palace on the hill. And I thought we'd finish our little trip in Nafplio with just a look at some of the private boats which have come in for the holidays. So I hope you've enjoyed my little tour of Nafplio. Um, I bring it to an end with a view of Palmidi where we started, and the boats which holidaymakers are renting this August to enjoy Greece, the Aegean, the Ionian, the islands, and maybe one day I'll be able to have one as well, who knows. 
some very nice boats here. Please subscribe, please like, please watch some of my other videos. I'm doing it for fun and I'm learning. I hope it's getting better as I go. Thank you and enjoy the day.